Hello and welcome to the R3 daycare presentation. We will review the definition of the R3 occupancy and the codes that govern them. We will also discuss the means of egress and fire safety as it directly relates to R3. The Group R3 Large Family Daycare Occupancy covers residential homes in which care is provided for 14 or fewer children and their provider's own home for less than 24 hours. These facilities are required to be licensed. The FCIP advisor from the Fire Prevention Bureau will conduct the initial inspection. Once the occupancy is code compliant, it will be inspected annually by Fire Department personnel. Let's start the inspection. The address must be visible from the street, not obstructed, and a contrasting color from the background. Continue the inspection to the interior and look for the facility's license. It should be posted in a conspicuous location. As previously stated, the R3 Large Family Daycare must be licensed and the FCIP advisor from the Fire Prevention Bureau will conduct the initial inspection. Once the occupancy is code compliant, it will be inspected annually by fire department personnel. Two exits are required for any licensed facility. The means of egress must exit to the public way. While walking around your facility, walk out all exits and see where they lead. The exterior exit door shall be a minimum of 3 feet in width and not less than 6 feet 8 inches in height. Exit door shall be capable of opening at least 90 degrees and have a clear width of not less than 32 inches. One of the exits may be a sliding glass door. It has been determined by the state fire marshal that deadbolts can be used on entry doors in Group R occupancies. The same standard for locks in any residential home occupied by the general public apply to these licensed occupancies as well. This is a change from what was previously interpreted in the fire code. Daycare activities on the second or higher floors and in the basement is prohibited unless certain conditions are met. Basements must have a minimum of two exits with one leading directly to the exterior without entering the first story. The second exit may pass to the story above or exit directly to the exterior. To use any story above the first, the entire house must be sprinklered and have two exits from each floor, one of which must lead directly to the exterior. The door separating the garage from the living area of the home must be self-closing. The door shall be solid wood, 1 and 3 8 inches thick, or a 20 minute fire rated door. Garages may not be used for daycare at any time, for any length of time. The only exception is when the garage has been legally converted by obtaining permits and signed off inspections from development services. Smoke detectors are required on each floor in every sleeping room and hallways leading to sleeping rooms. A device capable of sounding an alarm separate from the smoke detector is required and must be securely affixed to the structure. The purpose of the device is to warn occupants of an emergency other than fires. Activation shall be in one motion and the sound must be continuous. Sleeping rooms are required to have at least one rescue window. As with any other mean of egress, the exterior of the rescue window must be free of obstructions. At least one window with bars in a sleeping room must have a quick release. Extinguishers are required in R3 daycare occupancies. The minimum requirement is a 2A10BC, which is California State Fire Marshal tagged and approved. The extinguisher must be mounted 3 to 5 feet above the floor with the approved supplied bracket and is required to be serviced annually by a licensed contractor. The extinguisher must be visually inspected monthly by the owner. Water heaters must have proper seismic straps and be clear of all combustibles within 3 feet. Gas powered water heaters installed in the garage must remain 18 inches above finished floor. The combustion chamber cover must be in place. The water heater in the photo above does not have straps and is not clear of combustibles. Look for common electrical hazards. 
Cover plates are required for junction boxes, outlets, and on-off switches. All electrical splices shall be inside electrical boxes or conduit. Use of extension cords in lieu of permanent wiring is prohibited. Electrical cords shall not extend through walls, ceilings, floors, under doors, or under floor coverings. Electrical cords shall not be subject to physical or environmental damage. The electrical in all of these photos is in violation of the fire code. Thank you for help keeping our smallest residents safe. Mitigating potential hazards in your facility goes a long way to help the next generation. As always, please contact the Fire Prevention Bureau with any questions.